Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Sync Tech Hawaii. We are going to be talking about productivity in the workplace. And if you're any, if if you have the same perception that I do, and read certain psychological books, you know that the average office person, I'm almost afraid to say this because it might include me, is not very productive. There's a lot of wasted time and a lot of what does get done is really not contributing to the well-being of the business or the agency or Mother Earth. So here to address those big issues and then hopefully get down to some narrow issues also, Dr. Phyllis Horner, organizational psychologist and CEO of Great Places and Spaces. And with her, the, the better half, better half, I think, Manfred Zepka, the COO of Great Places and Spaces. Dr. Phyllis, as mentioned, is a psychologist. Dr. Zepka is a building systems engineer. So welcome to you, you. both. Thank you, Howard. And give us an introduction of what this organization, Great Places and Spaces, is all about, and then fill us in with some details. Well, Great Places and Spaces was formed um, out of the work that we've been doing individually for about 30 years in the building science side and mm -hmm. in the workplace productivity side, culture. And it was formed because the time is now for us to advise leaders on how to connect the dots between their two sides. Mm -hmm. And to really mm -hmm. say, when someone isn't productive and things aren't getting done, what are the factors that are causing that and how mm -hmm. do you reduce those factors? So that's really what we're after, and we've created a few new ways to do that. Mm -hmm. One thing that comes from, from my side, energy efficiency, is the fact that lead buildings, leadership and energy and environmental design mm -hmm. buildings are generally more productive, the occupants are more satisfied, and the building managers can actually charge uh, higher lease rents mm -hmm. for them because people are, are happier in that. Yeah, absolutely right. And even in our, our current market, which is one of the lowest um, uh, open commercial residential per square foot right now, mm -hmm. that is still the case. Um, we're here to talk more about the health and wellness, um, even in a lead building, mm -hmm. and the fact that not everybody uh, responds equally to any given work setting. So, for example, I could be cold right now and man not, mm -hmm. and in the old days, I wouldn't bring it up. Mm -hmm. Now it's different. Yeah. The employee expectations have changed. Absolutely. And they're speaking yeah. up, and that's really good for employers. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's good is because. Once we know what they really need, mm -hmm. uh, we can add in, for example, personal control of airflow and things of that mm -hmm. sort. And one, one of my fields is lighting, and we're getting more and more, and you may uh, introduce the topic, human-centric lighting. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. Uh, where for uh, retirement homes, nursing homes, you can emulate, even though the occupants may very rarely see the outdoors, you can emulate the cycle of uh, the outdoor sun and then the set, setting of the sun. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so Manfred and I are working together on this. And mm -hmm. uh, when we first started out, he was doing maybe the physical side and I was doing the cultural side. Mm -hmm. And what we realized um, by doing some deep dive research is that there are stats on the, um, the physical response to a culture. And there are mm -hmm. stats on the psychological or psychosocial response to a physical setting. So Absolutely. it's all crossed like the yeah. two sides of our brain. Mm -hmm. So Manfred, you have you've been interrupting us nonstop. Why don't you give give us a little <laughs> say, say an a, a example of the type of work you do? First of all, you know I've been uh, really have the pleasure to work with you. Because mm -hmm. you're actually the, the expert here in, in, in energy code. And I did a, a lot of work in, in energy efficient buildings. And then actually it came up to a point then where I realized, uh, you know, there's more than only energy. I didn't see only because mm -hmm. we have to, I mean, there's no question we have to uh, save energy. 
this is like imperative for us. You know, otherwise, we cannot save the planet. But actually, there was one point uh, where I started to read some research, which came, you know, a couple of years back, ten years maybe, where they uh, raised the, the the specter of if you're making the energy, the buildings too energy efficient, all of a sudden it might become, you know, not as healthy. Mm -hmm. So then afterwards, the health aspect came in. So I did <coughs> specifically like uh, occupant-centered comfort, health, you know, in terms of uh, indoor air quality, and uh, how, how uh, uh, is the temperature inside, is it comfortable? So at this point in time, actually, we, we joined forces, and we saw that actually the, you cannot really address the, the problem of productivity, you know, in, in like a silo. It has mm -hmm. to be reaching over to the other side. And we also realized that, you know, uh, Phyllis is really an expert in, in her field in the organization psychologist engagement. And I actually I know a little bit about uh, buildings, healthy buildings, and energy efficiency or effective high performance buildings. So we came to the understanding the best is actually that we join forces. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing right now. We're actually offering uh, ways actually to make a really big difference. And it's really a revolution how that's going on right now. It's uh, not only is that we have to make it energy efficient, but we make a, we have to make it uh, healthy. Because mm -hmm. when, when it comes down to it, like, what actually if you have a green building, if, uh, you know, the people inside is, are not healthy and are not satisfied. Mm -hmm. So we think it's red, and what we saw, it's really a new frontier. Maybe a new frontier of green building doesn't push it away, builds it up. From but really, the roots are there, but we have to go further. That's right. And if you're looking at the total cost of a building, energy is just a little manini thing, and the, the manpower, the salaries, are the big, that's the 800 pound gorilla there. And the more you can improve the environment, the more productive uh, right. people are. Yeah. Is it 1% and 90% or? Depends on the mainland, yes, but here might be three percent energy, ninety percent of ninety percent of personnel. Yeah. And, yeah. But actually, you know, you bring up a really fascinating point that you know what sometimes it's light lacking in the green building or in the sustainability movement is that we have somehow a problem of putting a value. To it. Mm -hmm. What is the immediate value in terms for for a company? If we save energy, for instance, we can say, all right, we actually we we, we save so much on the energy, but in terms of making it more productive, if let's say you just make it 10% productive. 10% mm -hmm. of 90% is much more than 30% of 1%. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's why he's the mathematician in the group. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it is true that, you know, um, like you say, and both of you, that really, if you thought about it long and hard, you would realize <clears throat> that the built environment is the first step. And that's, I think, why Well came along. <laughs> Um, and also why a lot of books from the human psychological side, like Best Place to Work for All and um, Best Places to Work and all of that kind of thing, uh, started to focus on something that they called the employee experience. Hmm. And the, it, that is also a revolution, right? Because before when we did comfort studies, for example, it's 80%, is that right? 80% is the acceptable level of satisfaction code. Mm -hmm. But what that means is that one out of every five people could be completely dissatisfied and unproductive, and we're just looking the other way because we stop at the code, and you would know mm -hmm. oh, about yeah. that, right? I don't yeah. know. What is your thought about that? Uh, well, the, what comes to mind immediately is in our air-conditioned environment here in Honolulu, a lot of people say that. This building is so inefficient, it's so cold. Mm -hmm. I am really uncomfortable. I have to wear a jacket and still my hands are, are cold. Mm -hmm. And number one, it's wasting energy. Number two, it's making that person unhappy. And they feel compelled to go outside and take a walk and warm, warm up a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so we're looking for helping to transform the workplaces in the United States so that that doesn't happen anymore. Mm -hmm. So that a person who is cold, number one, people know it. The bosses usually don't know. Yeah, they don't bring it up. And two, that if in fact 
they also need a plant nearby, you know, mm -hmm. that they have access to green space. Right now, there is no measure for the individual work experience that uh, allows that, except for the one that we proposed. Boy, I, I personally have plants all over my, my office. Yeah, it yeah. really helps, right? Mm -hmm. And we do have some images. Is it time to bring up an image yet? Or no. yeah, why, why don't we bring up image number one and see what's going on with that? Ah, ah yeah. Maybe I should speak to that. Speak to that, please. I'm the physical, you know, uh, <laughs> the physical person. So uh, what you actually have in a, in a uh, space, a space, there are two aspects. One which usually we say, you know, it's a nice space, that actually it feels good. This is the psycho psychosocial response to occupants. That it, you come into a place, you know, the, the proportions are nice, it feels good, it has a, a sense of, of, of belonging, of, of, of place. So that actually is something which the architects excel. And it is important, but it's not all. On the right side, on the, on the right side you see actually is the physiological response of documents. And there you see a lot of icons there which should stand for like uh, air quality, for uh, ventilation, for lights, what you know, uh, Howard was already saying, for temperature, for sound, and uh, ventilation inside. It, it says, you know, it, it, it indicates, do we actually have a, a, do we have sight of something outside of green something? So these actually, uh, these, all these uh, 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 conditions do actually have a, have a, uh, a direct effect on, on productivity on how people can perform. Because for instance, like if it's the, the more the one of the biggest uh, uh, deficiency is noise. If the noise is too too loud, actually people can actually lose in their productivity by fifty percent, fifty percent. And uh, ventilation, for instance, and there was a study by the Harvard uh, you know healthy building program where they said. It, on average, it takes six thousand five hundred dollars. You can increase per person mm -hmm. per year if the ventilation rate is actually increased mm -hmm. by twice as much as required by code. It might take some more energy, but right now, you know, on the other side, you can actually, you know, increase a lot of uh, a lot of revenue. Would that be the increased ventilation? Would that result in a greater uptake of oxygen in the human system? Yes, you know, there's carbon dioxide, you know, if, if uh, OSHA, for instance, says 1000 ppm is acceptable, but right now studies have actually shown that already when it goes over 700, you know, your, co your cognitive functions goes down. And we did some studies at the university where we measured uh, carbon dioxide levels in, in school, in, 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 in school mm -hmm. classes, which was 1400. I wouldn't so, know, because, because think in a, in a classroom, you've got, say, six and seven year olds, they are restless as heck. They're moving and squirming all over the place and they're breathing yeah. rapidly, their metabolism is high. Mm -hmm. And so they're exuding all of this carbon dioxide. How in the world do you get it all out of there? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And again, like if you don't uh, get rid of the carbon dioxide, it accumulates. Mm -hmm. yeah. Other things is also in, indoor pollutants, like VOCs, mm -hmm. it is called. You know, all kinds of material that we have inside or inside germs, you know, if they are not expelled outside, they make people sick. Mm -hmm. So ventilation is a huge component. Yeah. I think you talk to a hospital manager, he will know something about ventilation. Yes, Get those exactly. germs yeah. out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So the return That's of investment, even, even by that, is just... Uh, but then you run into the... It's a contraindication of if you're increasing your energy use because those fans are spinning real fast. That's exactly. And, yeah. you know, just to coming back, you know, the... We always try to, for energy purposes, to tighten up the envelope. Mm -hmm. But if we tighten up the envelope, yep. we don't have so much infiltration. Mm -hmm. We have to get mechanical ventilation, which costs mm -hmm. uh, energy. But also, right now, it's not sufficient. So by really you know, increasing the ventilation rate, we get an energy penalty. But you know, as you know, there are technology which we can avoid that. And that's I think cold. that's really important that we not only make it healthy, but we also make it energy efficient. Yeah. We need to take a break, but as soon as we get back, let's talk about the most scintillating topic under the sun, namely control. That, that, I know that warms the knuckles of your heart and as it does mine. So we will take a break for one minute, be back with Dr. Phyllis Horner and Dr. Manfred Zapka. One minute, Code Green Hawaii. 
Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World and I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. and this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you and uh, Aloha. Hey, aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us and uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii, Dr. Phyllis Horner and Dr. Manfred Sapka. What a scintillating team. And speaking of scintillating topics, controls, you were talking about buildup of CO2 in carbon dioxide in different areas. Let's take a big hall, the Waikiki, or the, yeah, Waikiki hotels have these great big meeting rooms Sometimes they've got three, 400 people in them, and sometimes they've got three or four janitors in them, and other times maybe two dozen workers who are shuff shuffling the tables around. The CO2 buildup in each of these environments isn't totally different. And then you've got three o'clock in the morning, there's absolutely nobody in there. How do you keep the CO2 levels, the oxygen levels, and the temperature? all in an extremely energy efficient mode while delivering maximum comfort and maximum health to the occupant. So the answer is actually our AC technology is too old you know, mm -hmm. because yep. it has to have ventilation, it has to have sensible cooling and also dehumidification in one, in one system mm -hmm. and we can't do that. So we have to split it up, technology is there, so then actually we can control ventilation differently from control, uh, uh, differently from dehumidification. And again, like dehumidification is to take the uh, humidity out. Mm -hmm. And I think right now, one is of course the technology aspect, but the other thing is the psychological aspect. I think Phil is- No, well, we, before we go into that, you missed my favorite, favorite topic, namely CO2 sensors. We yes. now oh, have okay. CO2 yes. sensors, yeah. Definitely, yes. And if there's an excess, yeah. Increase the ventilation, get that CO2 out of there. Because well, as, as we discussed earlier, I think we've reached a conclusion that the greater the CO2 concentration, the lower the uh, level of awareness and uh, human activity yeah. and, and energy. Yeah. yeah. You know, of course, if we increase ventilation, then actually cooling will be affected and, and you know, dehumidification. Mm -hmm. So we actually, the best would be that we step away a little bit think out of the box and you know with new AC uh, technology we can yeah. so it's very important. Yeah, yeah the uh, easiest example of that is we now are finally in Hawaii getting into a cooler weather and you walk into a building oh it's cold mm -hmm. what happened the AC was set for the hotter weather right. they didn't dial down for the, for the cooler weather right. and we're wasting energy and we're, we're uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, you said something about soft Oh, something. That's a joke something. you were referring oh, no. to, to your wife here. Yeah, of course, yeah. actually, it's like a lot of psychology involved. <laughs> yeah. Well, we should just disclose, since Howard uh, outed ooh, us, ooh, that ooh. we're partners in work and we're partners in life. So yeah. Yeah. this is uh, mm -hmm. my spouse and my business partner. Mm -hmm. uh, nine years. Nine years. Wow. Nine years and counting. Mm. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so I think that the idea of what you brought up earlier was also fascinating, both of you. When you, when you said, Howard, um, you know that the person walks in and they're freezing and mm -hmm. and that might be something that people notice is affecting their productivity if their hands are so cold they can't type for example mm -hmm. or uh, change a light or whatever they're doing but this one with the ventilation is really much more insidious because if you really have not enough ventilation the person's going to feel less productive and maybe even sleepy mm -hmm. and maybe then their their manager walks by and right and says mm -hmm. 
the matter with Phyllis? She's like slumping at the desk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that person could get a bad performance review yeah. simply because the systems of the building weren't set properly mm -hmm. for them to actually be productive. Yeah. And I think that's really a shame and something, you know, we really need to work on. And, and I think it's, it's an easy fix because if you know it and you can measure it, you know that X percent of your workforce, say it's 70 percent of your workforce is sensitive that way, you need something better than code, mm -hmm. then you really need to just put in something better than code. Then otherwise, you are leaving money on the table. Yeah, You're causing absolutely. productivity dips, right? And a lot of us in our office jobs are paid to think. And thinking requires energy. And I have been in this situation, mainly that post-lunch slump, where I'm supposed to be undertaking a difficult task. And I'm, I know, I know the answer. I'm just too... Uh, yeah. No. Right. So, so how do we uh, fix that now? Well, basically, we have to have a way to measure Maybe we'll pull up the next slide just for mm -hmm. yeah, 30 seconds or so. Uh, let's do the next slide. Slide number two. Slide number two. There we are. Yeah. So, I mean, this is basically something that many people have seen a version of. It's kind of mm -hmm. like a modified Maslow's uh, chart. Yeah. It looks and you, familiar. Yeah. Right. And so you can yeah. see that uh, the foundation is physical and psychological safety, which mm -hmm. means that they feel like they're not marginalized, that they're not going to. Um, have too much uh, darkness and trip. Um, there's not anything that's volatile that's going to harm them, chemicals or otherwise. And then psychologically, they won't be yelled at uh, when they make a mistake. So that's all in number one. Mm -hmm. Number two is belonging and acceptance, which is do I fit in? Um, am I treated like a team player? Mm -hmm. uh, is there a sense that this is the kind of place that uh, thinks the way I think. Uh, is there a sense of camaraderie in yeah. the workspace? And yeah. the teamwork, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And all of this is like in 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 surveys like Gallup, et cetera. Um, in achievement and focus is uh, do I feel like I'm doing meaningful work? And then the prime part, the thriving work settings, is that combination we're talking about, which basically says, um, I believe in the values, I would refer other people to work here and I don't want to leave. And mm -hmm. The thing that we're trying to show um, to our clients is that we're skipping a lot of steps. We're skipping number one. And when we do that, when we skip that physical and psychological safety aspect, and we have holes in the foundation, the ground can shift and people will leave. Uh, right now um, is the biggest time where employees are ready to walk out if, if the environment doesn't match them. And it's only going to get to be a bigger issue, even if we had a recession. So we're saying plug the problems in your lower levels before you try to just do a mission and vision and say, oh, we're, we're now a really progressive workplace. So do you have a like a checklist to take care of number one? You yes, can actually go we into do. the workspace and interview the, the boss or whoever? Yes, we actually have, a, we've created a, an assessment and you could show slide number three and yes. maybe you can talk about it, but it actually is a way to measure this. Mm -hmm. All right, this is my favorite slide. <laughs> And uh, so what you see, the physical workspace is at the X uh, uh, axis below, right? So it goes from low to high. And then you have a Y axis is the culture. What is the culture of the place? So I will be addressing only a little bit, then Phyllis should jump in. And uh, not only is productivity a problem, but uh, a lot of CEOs, uh, when, when you ask them, what, what, do we, what uh, keeps you up at night, they would suggest, you know, uh, retaining and attracting talent. Mm -hmm. This is actually the biggest thing. So if, if we actually uh, provide a workplace which is not conducive and attractive, people will just not come. You know, business might have to leave regions because they cannot attract, uh, you know, uh, uh, talent and so on. So let me see, like, number one. Number one, you see this quadrant, let's get out of here. You know, you have a physical work score, workspace score, which is uh, low, and you also have a, a deficient culture. So you don't want to be in there. And, and, you know, that's not surprise that actually people are just running away from that. And when you go to quadrant two, you have the gilded cage. You know, the, works, the, the workspace might be really nice. We have all kinds of amenities. We have beautiful interior and so on, but still, you know, people and, but if the uh, culture is not good, 
people also are not productive or run away. Oh, they call that golden handcuffs in the old days. And mm -hmm. Actually, also, Google had some of this because they had the beautiful workspace, and they mm -hmm. ended up thinking that they were treating everyone fairly and that people were happy. But then they had a big walkout of women and men that supported them because of an unfair work culture. And so it caught up to them. And I guess that's our main message is, is you could catch up to anybody. What you really need to do is, is to ask each person, what is the ideal work setting that makes you productive? Roll all that data up and then say, okay, so of all the things that are important to our people that are gonna make them wanna stay, because it's not only what's important to you, but how does it compare to what you have now? What are the biggest priorities that would give us ROI without going, blowing the budget? Mm -hmm. And it's our contention that the amount of money they're wasting on lack of productivity right now Mm -hmm. would be more than made up for by the small investments in some of these changes. Maybe can we bring it back to slide number three? Also, thank you, and see the quadrant three. Yeah, like yeah well, quadrant three is a, is a place where you love your work so much that you look the other way on the way that it's laid out. You try not to let it affect you. Um, so we call it road first colored glasses. And then uh, quadrant four is uh, what we are helping business leaders to do is to maximize and optimize both the physical and the psychosocial response to the workplace. We've One only, last, oh, sorry, go oh, ahead. We've only got a little time, but yeah. one example of improving the interior environment we talked about it earlier is plants. That's right. I personally just love having plants around. Plants are and the easiest. Speaking of which, what do they absorb? Absorb? They the absorb CO2. CO2. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's so, actually what we have come up with a, mm -hmm. with a what we call an ROI. Mm -hmm. Actually, you don't necessarily have to make everything optimal. So, what is the biggest or the smartest investment? For instance, you see like the with the plants. Plants are absolutely you know a perfect example. They're very mm -hmm. relatively cost effective. They could be the first step. And then yeah. you just move from there. And we got about one minute. Give give me some other examples of how how you might suggest improving the workplace. Well, basically, I think on the physical side, um, on the physical side, uh, logo wear for people who are cold. Yes, yes, yes. Right? yes. You just like you invest a little bit of money in the person, and and then they feel like they're they're proud that to wear your logo wear, yeah, and yeah, yeah, instead yeah. of all these different assortments of things, that's an easy one. Yeah. And asking people, what do they, what do you want? Or that you invest into things which afterwards is not considered to be. And on that very cheery note, we must. Did fond farewell to Dr. Phyllis Horner, Dr. Manfred Zepka. Thank you so much for being on Cold Green Think Tank Hawaii. Thank you See so you much for having time. us, Howard. Mm -hmm. really really